Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a sunset with frit. Powdered frit is a fi very fine grain glass that comes in these jars. And as you can imagine, powder is very uniform and smooth and soft. And the advantage to it is you can get a really nice gradient painterly quality on your glass. What we do is take the powder material we put it in this sifter, which is basically a little container with a screen on the bottom. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. Uh, and then you, um, we take a little spoon, put the powdered frit in here, and then we sift it over the glass. And it kind of like adding powdered sugar to your cookies. It just makes it delicious. So we're going to add the color. And when we add the color, uh, we you know work a gradient. So for sunset, we're going to go yellow, orange, red, and then some blue in the background. I also have some white for the sun, and I also have some black. We're gonna create some, like a silhouette of some details in this design. So I have two pieces of clear glass. Both of them are cut to six by six inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with my design. Now, when I get started, uh, I want to have, so I want this to be kind of a bit of a beach scene with a sunset and then uh, some land in the front. And I want it to be a nighttime or, or a dusk scene where the, foreground materials or, or um, subject matter is dark. So I'm going to uh, create a horizon line with this piece of paper. I'm gonna put it over the bottom portion of the glass a little bit like that, and that way I'll get a really nice, this side seems to be uh, cut better. Then I'll get a really nice, straight, hard, crisp line between the sky and that area that we're gonna do that'll represent the land mass that's right there in the foreground in front of us. So I'm gonna place this on here. Just kind of make sure it's even, there we go. I'll put on my mask, my dust mask, because we're working with powder material. Oops, okay, there we go. All right, how about this look? All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start with uh, white, actually. Now white is kind of a nice base color I'm going to sift that on there. You want to be kind of thick so you get good coverage. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of an angle here for fun. So I want nice good coverage on there. And then we're going to pour this back in the jar. And now I'm going to take this little piece of clear glass that's cut into a circle. And we'll put it on top of that white so that I retain that color. Now I'm going to take some yellow. This is... Um, just a pretty yellow color. I'll sift that over the white. So you get nice saturation there. Put that back in the jar. Now I'll take some orange and sift that. Ooh, look how pretty that is. The nice thing about working with powder is you can get a real nice soft gradient transition of colors. Whereas when you're working with a thicker material, it's a little harder to do that. Now I'm working with red. There we go. I'll put a little touch of red in, in the yellow here. There, and this red and orange are both opal colors. What that means is that there's white in with the color. So when I take this orange and put it on top of the red, it should show because there's a little bit of white in this glass and so it should show on top of other colors. If the glass was not opal, if it was transparent, make sure I put this back in the right jar, if it was transparent, then instead of getting an orange and a red, we would get a different shade of orange red. We'd get a, a kind of a burnt color. And that's fine too. It's just I really want to ensure that I get those. If I choose a color, I want to make sure that I get it. Now this blue is also an opal. So it should show up on top of, if I put a little bit over here, it should show up on that color. If I put a little bit over here, it should show up on that color. All right, I think I would like to put a little more up here. So add a little more of that powdered frit. Now this sifter is about an inch and a half or two inches across. They, there are smaller ones you can use to get a little bit finer detail. All right. Make it a little bit thicker. So when you're applying the frit, you want enough coverage to get good color, 
but you don't want to make it so thick that it creates bubbles. We're actually going to take this layer of glass and place it on top of this layer. We want to make sure that we don't create bubbles. So we do that by keeping the, the thickness of this nice and uniform. Got a little more yellow over here, maybe a touch of yellow up here. Oh, I like that. Uh, touch right here. Touch over here. There we go. Yeah, maybe a little bit right there. Ooh, that's fun, right? Yeah, I like that. Ooh, fun. And this blue is a turquoise blue, so it's kind of a, a beachy Caribbean color. All right. Just to make sure I have enough color, I'm going to add a little more blue. Now, if you wanted to get stronger color, what you can do is work on a piece of white glass. The reason I selected clear is because the light will come through it, and I think that makes it really beautiful. All right, now, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna take a little bit of orange. Uh, I'm gonna use my sifter. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of orange in here. I'm gonna kind of put a little bit over here on, this, on the horizon. There, I like that. Maybe a little bit over here. There we go. A little bit more, a little bit over here little here. So it's kind of like, you know, adding paint to your picture. You keep adding a little more, a little more until you get something you really like. And that's what I really like about the powder material is you can get softness. You know, if you're going to, you know, fusing a lot of times is very harsh. You're cutting a piece of glass, it's a square or circle, it's a rectangle, and the shape is really uh, strong. The edge quality is really strong. With the frit, you don't have to do that. You can have this nice soft softness that gives you a sense of movement and a little bit more, just a different kind of look, you know, which is just fun. All right, here we go, put a little yellow up here. Okay, I think we're gonna call that done. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the little circle and check that out. We have our little white sun. I'll remove that. Just dump this over here. So we have our sun and we have our horizon line. Now I'm gonna take the same piece of paper I'm going to hide my, my sky very carefully, place it on top, there we go, and I'm going to take the black glass, put that in the sifter, and we're going to make that, um, that close area that kind of creates the foreground in the design. Now, you've heard me say, you know, I try to, I use black and white very purposefully. I purposely am using black here because I want a really strong contrast between that foreground and the sky. Now we're going to very carefully, first I'm going to double check that I think I have enough coverage there, and I think I do. So when I take this off, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to kind of tilt that up a little bit and let the extra material kind of fall on there. Ooh, and look how fun that is. I've got this beautiful foreground with the background. We've got a little bit of powder moving around right here. Let's take our finger and just kind of push that over. And there we go, we've got this beautiful sunset. Now I'm going to take some yellow and kind of give myself, oh, maybe I'll take some white, give myself some rays. Ooh, is this fun, right? Come on, let's do something a little different. Let's put a little bit of white in the sifter. Let's get it down to the end. And I'm going to take this piece of paper, sift a little bit of powder over it. Ooh, look, we're getting some sun rays. All right, we gotta get this in the right spot. There we go. Isn't that fun? I think we need one more right here. Now this is gonna be a real subtle feature. I think I need a little bit more of this powder material in here. There we go. This one I think I want a little stronger right here by the sun. Yeah, there we go. And maybe, maybe even a little stronger everywhere. So let's, because white tends to be, every time I use white, I'm always surprised that you need so much more of it to get the effect that you want. It's really pretty subtle. Oh, look how cool that's coming out. I'm feeling like an old hippie here, an old hippie sunset. I should put this on a t-shirt or something. Ah, sunsets never get old, am I right? 
Oh, we got some. Oh, we got some in the foreground there. That's all right. Maybe this one should go out further. Okay, I think I'm going to make this these two a little longer, so they kind of have a radius to them. So I'm going to put this here. Set some fruit out here. Yeah. Ooh, look how fun that is. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. Now we're now we're talking. This one needs a little more strength to it. All right, maybe this one too. And this one too, oh my gosh, now I'm going crazy. Now I can't stop myself. All right, there we go. Now, what do you think? Should we add a little bit of yellow to that or just leave it? I think we're gonna, ooh, I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna add a touch. Oh, I, I just can't stop myself. So let's go add a little touch of yellow off right off this table here, just to our sun. Yeah, look at that, a little bit, a touch of color there. It's not quite so stark. A touch of orange. It's not quite so stark. Yeah, okay, we're calling, we're calling that done. All right, now, we're gonna take this, put it aside, and this piece of glass is gonna go on top like this. So we're gonna put some detail on here. So the, the powder will be between layers. So this is some um, black glass line outlining medium, and it's a paint for glass fusing. Now I can go ahead and take my mask off now, thank goodness, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw some palm trees on here. Kind of maybe just one palm tree coming in from the side. So let me bring this closer to you. I can see a little bit better. All right, got this pan and broom right here. There we are. All right, now this has an applicator tip that I, uh, hold on, I got it right over here. I can't reach it. Can I reach it? I don't know. Okay. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> this is called studio exercise stretching. Oh. Uh, okay. Getting all the, all, the, all the things done here today. Getting the artwork done, getting a workout. Perfect. All right, this is a piece of scrap clear. This is a little applicator tip that allows me to do a really fine line. But what happens, if the paint doesn't have a nice consistency to it, it'll clog, and it clogs all the time. And it's really kind of, um, it's wonderful when you get it to work, but when it clogs, it's kind of annoying. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is, I added some water to the paint, shaking it up really, really good. I took this paintbrush, and I used the, this portion of it, and I put it in the jar and I stirred it around really good to try to make it nice and smooth and make it the paint a consistent um, thickness so it'll flow nicely. Okay, I'll take this cap off and let's give it a little test over here on this piece of scrap and see how it works. I'm pushing this on really tight. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right, let's come up here with our tree. Oh, see, now it's clogging. Now, fortunately, this palm tree is kind of, you know. Oh, see, now it's, it doesn't want to work for me. Oh, come on now. Okay, well, when that happens, take the tip off. And I take a little bit of water. And I squirt it through the tip. And I get it on the table. Oh, there we go. Okay, now it's coming out again. Okay. So basically, I'm just squirting water through the tip. I'll show you. Ooh, like that. That clears the tip. Now, the first time I use this again, it's going to come out kind of watery. So I'm going to do it over here on this piece. There we are. All right, so let's make our palm tree. Ooh, there we go. I'm going to let some clear show through. That'll be cool. It'll show through for the, um, some of that sky will show through. We have a nice loose kind of palm tree here. Oh, we're clogging up again. There we go. And this is an abstract sort of tree. There we are. Loving that. That's cool, right? And now maybe we add a couple little you know, bits of grass down here. All right, so 
I've decided that I'm just gonna leave this palm tree the way it is. It's a little rough, but that's okay. It's a silhouette scene. And I added a little bit of detail over here. So I have the bottom is black, the tree is black, and this little detail is black. So I have kind of a triangular shape of visual dark areas to contrast all that bright behind. I left some opening open areas in the tree and I'm really excited about seeing how the sunset behind peeks through those and illuminates the tree a little bit. So I the paint is kind of thick in this area. You can see right here the paint is like a gray color. That means it's dry. So I'm going to take this piece, stack it on here, move it to the kiln, but I'm going to wait for this paint to dry completely and have this gray color before I turn the kiln on. If you turn it on prematurely, the paint that's still wet can um, crack and um, kind of peel and you don't get such great coverage or such great detail with your palm tree and our other areas. So I'm going to go ahead and take this very carefully, lift it up, put it on top of here. There we go. Now this is the tricky part, lifting this up. There we go. Not too tricky actually. I'm going to carry this to the kiln. Oh, look, we have Titan here helping out. And we're putting this on a primed ceramic kiln shelf. I'm going to use my fingernails to just get out from underneath that. It slides up just ever so slightly to square it up. There we go. Hey, look how cool that is, right? We've got a sunset. We have some beautiful colors. We have the um, nice contrast of the silhouette tree, silhouette, you know, the little grassy areas here and then the dark foreground. So just loving the way that's looking. All right, we're going to fire this to a full fuse temperature. After it's fired, we'll pull it out and show you what it looks like. Hi, welcome back to the studio. We fired our Scut Firebox 14 with our um, sunset project in there overnight. Let's see what we have. I'm going to open this kiln. Here we go. Very exciting. All right, these came out fabulous. Look at this beautiful sunset. Got great color, good saturation, really nice edge quality. Very pleased about that. Nice high contrast detail here with the tree. A little bit of detail where this, um, the sunset is kind of peeking through the tree. I like that a lot. We've got some grassy areas over here. The sun, nice detail there. A nice diagonal with the frit. So we have some nice pattern direction going on there. I always like to, when I'm working with frit or other colors and things, I always like to add a little something special. You know, some color, some uh, direction. You know, nothing's random. I always put some sort of little special thing in there to make it unique in my own you should do the same. So now you know how to make a sunset with Fret, and I uh, hope you enjoyed learning how to make this project, and I hope you make one for yourself real soon. Big or small, this is a project that you will love, super fast, easy, and so rewarding because it comes out so beautiful. So please consider joining my premium video membership. Would love to have you. Please like, follow, subscribe, uh, share the video if you like it. Would love for you to do that for us, and until next time, happy fusing.